Whew. So that's how loud the motor is. Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, today, uh, I've kind of wanted to do this for a little while because I've got one. I've never seen anybody do one. Uh, so I thought I would at least check out the whole Eternia set. Get everybody and give everybody a detailed look an inventory of what you're supposed to have and you know we'll just kind of go and we'll start off from here so uh, as you can tell from the opening the motor is actually really really loud there we go and that was on the monorail let's give it a quick flip so you can see it so, uh, to find one of these is uh, it's getting harder and harder that's all I'm gonna say usually the insides here I'll show you. It just takes. Oh, there we go. It takes two AA batteries. There's nothing. There's no uh, components on this or anything like that. They're all on the inside. And I just cleaned mine up. There was quite a bit of corrosion. You can still see a little bit there. I'm just getting to that, but I just wanted to get it to work first. Uh, you're looking at probably about a hundred to almost $250, but $250 is like a really good condition and the guy's a little bit mad about what he wants for it. I would never pay that for it, but um, these are getting really, really difficult to find in working condition. So uh, there you go, that's the motor, that's the first part. One of the most key components, but if you find a broken one, they do make good display cases, or they make display pieces, so. Uh, so moving on, we're gonna go to the weapons rack. Now this, this offers, this gives people a lot of confusion about what belongs in the Eternia weapons pack. And basically let's start off, we've got a rocket launcher. And this thing is a, like a slingshot. Uh, you've got a crossbow and a gold bow. A lot of people put in the silver bow, but it's actually Ninjor's weapon. So if you have it, it doesn't belong to the set. And it's actually quite valuable. Uh, not too valuable, but, you know, it's an accessory. And if you know anything about toys, accessories are always the expensive stuff. It comes with four grappling hooks. Uh, this is the front side. I'm trying to... I'm sorry about the light. Uh, I'm doing this downstairs. And the only thing short of taking it outside, this thing is really difficult to light. And then we've got, you know, both sides. But they come with four of these. And no more, no less. The gun blade. A lot of, I, I call it the gun blade because, let's face it, that's what it looks like. Uh, it's just a simple weapon. It only, it's actually not a very good weapon either. It's got a really small handle. And it only kind of, sort of fits in the hand. Like, you got to kind of rest it in there. I've, I've always had a problem with it. So I never use it. For displays or anything like that. And then, oh yeah, here we go. We've got the weapons rack itself. I do need to repair just a little bit, but uh, you know, when it comes to restoring and fixing stuff, uh, I'm pretty careful and I want to make sure I get the right glue to put that on because I tried using some tacky glue and it just didn't work right and it, I didn't want to, you know, continue on anymore. I just left it. So, but you go to the other side. Yeah, I'll show you every sticker I can because I know a lot of people like the art on the stickers, especially me, like when I showed my Cloud City and my uh, uh, Death Star, I really like the way the art goes. But it looks like this is some sort of like battle station because, I mean, they've got Eternia in the crosshairs, so, you know, a little bit more flakage right there. So moving on, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to do the simplest to the, to the coolest vehicle first. So this is the first one, He-Man just kind of sits in there, but... Uh, it's really, really kind of a simple thing. And I've seen it displayed like this, but it sits like this. So if anybody wants to know, because this is the way the uh, motor fits into it and it just slides in. And the motor's not e or not hard to get in and out, it just slides, it's, it's no real big deal. And then we've got, uh, you know, the double guns and then you saw He-Man fit in there, so that's that. And then we've got the sky cage. Uh, the stickers on both sides, they're in better, I've seen them in better shape, but whatever. You know, some sculpted details into there. And then, uh, this is kind of neat. See this little red flippy thing here does this. You know, it flips it open, and then you can see the inside of the cage, and then the front of the cage pops open like that. It looks like a jail of some sort. Uh, I don't know exactly what they were thinking when they, were, when they did it. 
but uh, they did something with it and it's just another vehicle to have to collect so I mean if you want the complete ones it's one thing but I gotta say this is the weakest one out of the whole collection of the uh, the sky vehicles and stuff. I, I just don't like it so I never use it I just leave it on the ground but this one's kind of cool this is the shuttle and uh, to put He-Man in you can either pop open the front here but uh, it doesn't sit very well for me. I don't know. Like it, it maybe, maybe it's just. Oh, I see. That's why. Okay, because it's missing a tab. That's okay. Um, but I can. It's kind of hard to pull off anyway. But uh, there's the stickers in the front. You can see it. Actually, the window's in fairly decent condition. It's not completely scratched where you can't see through it. I mean, if this is a camera and it, if it can see through it, it's like you know it's doing all right. And then you've got some gauges and stuff on the inside. Nothing too spectacular, but this is kind of neat that it uh, pops open in the back. So you can just slip a guy in there easy, and then you've got some jets on the back. Now this part here, these two red wheels are often, if you can find one with it, with them, pick it up. Because uh, they're really kind of difficult to find. And then you've got the side cannon on the side. But these little wheels, like I, I often see this shuttle missing them. I don't know whether they were too small and they got broke, or... Because to snap them in was kind of a bitch. It was really difficult. I had to use a heat gun and make sure that I didn't shatter the plastic while putting them in. And then that's that. So now let's get to the meat and potatoes. As some people like to say. Not me, but that's it. Um, we've got the, uh, the whole front. Going all the way up, I'll get to the flags. I'll do each uh, component. But I'm just going to give you an overview here. Here's the front. And Viper Tower. And this is 99% complete. I'm missing one part. And that's okay because um, I'll get to it and I'll show you which part I'm missing. But uh, for starters here, we've got uh, this little Manta Ray guy. There's nothing too special about him. He's just kind of a moat monster. He's no sculpting underneath, just uh, a serial number and, you know, nothing special. This is kind of neat though. You got the two gargoyles on the front. And... Uh, Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. And this one here is like it's on a base you can see it's hollow it's not hollow it's just a flat piece but this one here oh there's carrium in there <laughs> forgot about that uh, it's got a hollow in a spider in there so if you want to like hide some treasure and oh, boom there you go I hid some treasure fairly simple now, this is the cool part this is the really like this is the really cool part we've got the sculpting that went into the moat. We've got the halberd, the broken sword, the axe, piece of the mace, but look at that. The power sword is in there, which is kind of neat. Uh, I think a few, few people have written fan fiction about it. Some people say it's King Grayskull's sword that got lost in the chasm, and then this is where it wound up. And then uh, we've got a sword here, and a shield. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of silver wash over a few a few of these things so and then underneath we've got another moat monster and it looks like there's mud and looks like he's got a hand or something that he's you know grabbing onto look there's the nails and scratching and then there's like there he is he's got a tail and you know, it's just cracks it looks like little streams have been running through like if you ever go to the beach you'll see what I'm talking about and then there's He-Man's axe, and another axe, and a broken sword, and a hand reaching out of a sewer grate with like another snake, and there's another piece of a halberd. Like they're all broken in the bottom of it, which is kind of neat because I mean it is the ultimate battleground, right? So I guess that's kind of what they had in mind. And then you've got this feature here, this little switch. The arms are working very, very well on these. They're a little loose here, but I think that's because it could be age. I don't know. I didn't have one of these as a kid, but uh, these work like fluid. I've seen them get caught up. They don't work very well, and they're just they, most people just leave them. So I'm pretty happy about that. And then we've got the one side here, and you know what? I'm actually running out of power. So I will actually pause on that and I will get back to you in part two after this charges. So enjoy what you've seen first and then I'll totally get back to you and do the, the second part.
Alright guys, take care and we'll see you real soon.